All right, so what we've got today is a more traditional pair of wardrobes to go in this space. And we're building these using the same construction methods that we use for alcove cabinets, which work for wardrobes when they're two doors wide or less. So we're using inset hinges, which throw the doors within the carcass. And then we're, we're putting cover strips over the edge, which ends up at 54 millimeters. So this type of hinge, which is not, not typical for a wardrobe because most often you're doing overlay, but it just allows us to have this traditional framed look in a relatively easy way, just packing out the, the thick side panels there. And we'll be having Ashley, once it's all finished, Ashley will be coming in and matching up the coving. So we've carried all the boards up, so I'm slightly out of breath, and Brady will be getting assembling them, um, using the back panels as a sort of flat workbench to start assembling the frames. That'll be the, the two lower units, which are split off first. And while he's doing that, I'll be leveling these, these plinths, which are heftier than normal because they want to go up to the skirting height. So we're going to wrap that, I think it's a seven inch or no, nine inch maybe Taurus skirting and wrap that round. Now I've got my Hewapar level set on vertical and I'm lining it up with the back of that plinth and making sure that that line clears the picture rail because I don't want to put my units up and they foul on that and then I've got to move everything at the base. So that shows that it clears it, so I'm safe. I'll do the same on this side, just to make sure that that, that outer side doesn't end up hitting the picture rail as well, and we'll be good to go. This unit's up. I've secured it back to the wall using brackets. I've had some questions about these brackets. They're made by a company called Emuca, which is Spanish. They're not easy to get hold of, but we recently discovered that NAGS Furniture Fitting sell them. That's K-N-A-G-G-S, NAGS. So get in touch with them and you can get those brackets. Uh, this is the top box. So I've marked off the positions. I've just fitted the brackets freely on top of the other one, marked off where they've land on this and cleared the waist there with the force in a bit. It's rough and ready, but it's quick. It doesn't need to look good. It just, it's just allowing them to sit tight together when they're, when they're fitted together. For these assemblies, we're using Confirmat screws, which work a bit like metal dowels. And where necessary, we're using dominoes, five millimeter dominoes, just where we need them to avoid screws showing. So where those shelves hit that divider, they're gonna get dominoed in. Everywhere else where the screw head's not gonna be seen, we're using the compromats. Um, we're using less of these, just because we find they, they sort of wander as they go in, uh, whereas the compromat ones, they've got a blunt end that locates into the drilled hole. So they're better for, for flat packing. And we just figure they're stronger as well. And it doesn't really take that much longer to drill through for them with that than to do a small pilot hole for the black screws. So what I've done here is I've put some 18 millimeter packers against the side of the unit. And then I've offered up this pre-painted finished cover panel which has been made a bit oversized, only just oversized as it's turned out. And I want to then clamp it so that the front edge is parallel. So this gap here is parallel all the way up. And I just need to measure that gap or set a scribing tool to it and scribe that off the wall. Whatever that, that ends up at when I cut it, this will push back tight to that curve and end up flush at the front and I can fit it. units 
screws together. I like to use Craig screws whenever I can, and it's a perfect opportunity when we've got an apron like this. The reason for, for that being there is to receive the uh, picture rail across the front later, but it just gives us a nice place to hide these screws. fitting this trouser rack now up here there's a lot of back and forth with the customer about what to put where they wanted some shirt hanging at this height and the trouser pull out at this height we squeezed that as short as it could be um, the space between the skirting and picture rail is shorter than I'd normally recommend for double hanging but we made this work so the trouser rack I'm using is an IKEA bit of kit uh, because it just so happened that it would fit the design um, it's from the complement range and it's made for a one meter wide unit. And it just sort of worked out that this unit was finishing near enough to 1,036 millimeters. I think we just tweaked it a couple of millimeters to make it finish that way, which meant that the internal measurement was a thousand, which meant that by just adding two 18 millimeter spacers, we're effectively creating um, the internal width you'd get with the IKEA wardrobe that this is made for. Um, and that just helps give it a bit more clearance, a bit more clearance to throw it in from the, the doors that are set on inset hinges as well. I've just been working out the spacings for this because it comes with instructions that, that assume a, a Pax wardrobe with, with pre-drilled holes so it doesn't actually tell you the spacings. So I just had to measure them off the, the runners. And then it's just a simple case of fitting using spacers and some screws like that. On different videos, I've shown some different approaches to fitting hinges to carcasses. Now these, these are chipboard carcasses, melamine based chipboard. We're using the chubby screws, the Euro screws that go into a five millimeter pre-drilled hole. But unlike the first kind of main series uh, wardrobe install video that I did, the two part series, unlike that one, we're not now getting these pre-drilled because we decided to save the money on the CNC pre-drilling. So, what we do is we fit the hinges with the mounting plates to the door first, it's laid flat like this. And then we offer the door up. And for this job, we're, we're offering it up onto a, a temporary spacer that we've screwed onto the plinth, which is in the position of the, the cross piece that will, go, that will get fitted between the side scribes in the end. Uh, so we've offered it up and then Brady's just using, he's using the hinge mounting plates as a template um, and he's, he's, given, he's given himself a mark back from the edge of the 37 millimetres where they should land. He's offered the first one up, drilled and put a screw in and then he's just going down and drilling through the hinge plates with the 5 mil drill and then putting those chubby screws in. Now anybody that does bespoke fitted furniture knows there are a million and one things that can catch you out once you move away from standardizing. And that's why your places like Sharps and a lot of big successful fitted com furniture companies do standardize. They're generally working to a limited range of carcass heights, a limited range of door widths. And <clears throat> it's quite it's quite clever really, because I mean, just one example of of how you get caught out. This job was very bespoke designed Although it may look quite uniform when they're all together, the widths of the alcoves vary by, it's just like a few centimetres, a couple of centimetres or so, but we make everything to fit exactly so the side scribes look even. So that means that the doors are a very small difference in width. The doors over there are slightly narrower than the doors over there. Um, and when you're just fitting your first one, it's easy to pick up the wrong one and fit it. And that was a problem here because the hinge plates on the on the door that we first fitted here before realizing it was the, the wrong width, the hinge plates were in a different position. 
And that's something we, we forgot because we've got lots of jobs pushing through. And um, you do go into autopilot, which you, you then sort of berate yourself for. But actually, there's all sorts of things where you go into autopilot and you have to because that's the only way you get something like this fitted quick enough. And you just make an assumption that something works the way it always does. This one had to have the hinges moved because the standard hinge position would have just landed on that shelf. And that shelf was in a very specific position based on the customer's measurements of the minimum height for trouser hanging, trying to maximise this height. So once you open the door to making it all bespoke designs, you throw up all these issues that then need very careful thought about the knock-on effect. Another issue was that I, I got lucky really with this, this pullout. I designed it knowing it would fit with those spaces, but not actually knowing that it came with some additional spaces. And when we started putting the wardrobes up, and I remembered that, of course, these doors on this type of hinge are thrown into the unit, I suddenly thought, oh no, this, this rack might hit the door before it comes out. As luck would have it, it does have those spaces. But it's very hard to anticipate everything. So I think to be successful, you have to have that mixture of the bespoke design, which makes you distinctive and unique, and which I think people do expect from a small scale maker, mixed with enough standardization that you can produce things efficiently enough. And it's, I find it a constant, constant tension. And I'm sure others that do this kind of work would have similar experiences. So when I had both the doors on, I checked the gaps, around about three mil looks good. And I also checked the uh, the width of this pre-finished part that's gonna go behind the picture rail. Just offered that up. And I, I've marked, oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> that's from the other side. But the, the other one landed on that mark there. And I just checked that with it landing there, the gaps were gonna be right with the doors and, and there were. So I, I've used that other one to mark where I can where it crosses a shelf or whatever. And I found that that is consistently about three millimeters in from the inner face of the unit there. So I can now just use that as a reference, offering up the oversized scribe. I can bring that in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix that parallel with the inner face. So I can just measure the, the setback there and then do a bit of maths to figure out the scribing distance I wanna take off there. So it sets back to that position where it's gonna land on those marks I made, which I know are three millimeters in from the inner face. Uh, and I have, I have gone down the route of, of cutting these off, which is it's kind of my preferred route now, because it is, it is a tidier finish. Is Ashley coming to template the plaster coving. We've got the side scribe on there. I've decided to fit it without cork already because we've got this textured textured wallpaper. If you if you cork joins to that you're gonna get a feathery ragged edge of cork because it goes into the texture and there's nothing you can do about it. So you're best off really just having a, a tight scribe. So over here, we've, uh, we've got started fitting the upper doors using that, that uh, picture rail backer as a spacer. We've got slight issues with gaps where there's never so slight curve in that side scribe annoyingly. So we're just trying to get the doors positioned just right for that. And where, where we're at now is just trying to get those gaps just right. We're kind of tilting, tilting everything ever so slightly like that on the bottom so that we can then tilt the top doors to get a parallel gap there, which means we've got, we've got to just slightly lift, slightly lift the left and right ones on the hinges and tilt it all a bit that way, but we'll be able to get them looking even.
now that we've got the doors well lined up the way we want them, we can put that strip across the middle there, which will be the backer for the picture rail. Brady's doing it over there. He's put some packers on, just two more packers off the tops of the doors. He's clamped it, he's putting the Craig screws in from the back. I'm gonna be doing the same thing. Same thing here. Let's get that on those packers. Got even looking gaps there. And uh, screw it from the back and it's nice and tidy. And then we've got this tidy V joint here, which is the, the best approach for these pre-sprayed components. Just make a feature of that joint.